Future provides career and employment perspectives for anyone interested in learning how others have navigated their vocational choices. Listeners will pick up tips about creating meaning in their lives, building experience, developing a professional network, and managing their own careers to have a positive impact. Featuring lively discussions and special guests, we'll discuss unique career journeys and offer valuable insights into thinking about your future. It's never too soon to begin planning your career path, and it's never too late to make a change. Join us and learn how to take this stress and anxiety out of career planning. Hello and welcome to another episode of Discovering Your Future. I am your host, Stephanie Ramirez, and today our guest is Jonathan Perno, Director of Business Development at CyberPoint International and Founder and Executive Director of Bold Innovations Group. Jonathan, thank you for being with us today and I'm looking forward to the conversation. Let's kick it off by telling us about your career journey. How did you get to where you are? Awesome. It's such a pleasure to be here today, Stephanie. Thank you for having me. And yeah, sure, getting right into it. I have gotten to where I am today based on just um, a long history of family support. Um, you know, some, some divine help, if you will, uh, along the way. And um, I do believe that I put in some hard work in schooling and also uh, in previous jobs. And so I started out um, in school going in for engineering and wow. switched from engineering into education. And like a lot of people do, you know, change your majors and everything. I, I did that because I was also involved in sports. And so I changed my major, went into education, finished, taught a little bit and worked for others and learned a lot about uh, this world of business and learned a lot about um, government contracting. And uh, now I'm at the place where, you know, you said it, I'm the director of business development for CyberPoint International, a great cybersecurity firm, internationally known. Um, and we support places like the intelligence community, um, NSA and other three letter agencies. And meanwhile, I had al also started and have some mentorship from CyberPoint in starting my company, Bolt Innovations Group. And so very excited about that in the world of technology and innovation surrounding it. So um, that's a, a brief point of wow. my that's <laughs> awesome. Journey. That's awesome. So <clears throat> can you tell us more about your business, cybersecurity? Because when someone talks, I, I'm not a person mm -hmm. of you know it person <laughs> right right so can you explain me like a little bit what do you do in your business okay awesome from the technical standpoint or just from the so my, i'm in the business of getting more business okay. for our company okay uh, but our business in general when you talk about cybersecurity, when you talk about technology innovation mm -hmm. it's finding us every day um, i'm looking around this room and there's, you know, there's cybersecurity implications everywhere in terms of um, just the, the terminals that are over here um, that have to be protected. The fact that we're here in a college where so many students have their personal information, you know, in a variety of ways, you know, housed in the school. We're, we're carrying our devices on our phones. You know, we have a lot of our personal information right. on our phone. Um, in the world of sports is finding us, you, you find it on all the commercials, AWS is now, you know, Amazon Web Services is now a big partner with the NFL. Um, so analytics is a big part of, you know, right. looking into how do we use technologies to make the world a better place or do some of the things that we do more efficiently. And then as we use technology, that opens us up to then additional threats. So the world of cybersecurity is all about, you know, as we have a digital footprint, an online footprint, what, what does that expose us to? Right. You know, in terms of, you know, how does it make us vulnerable? Uh, what risks from a security standpoint, what doors have we opened by using technology? Yeah, and internet is very broad, right? So it's like you're exposed. Exactly, right? exactly. Okay, we gotcha. 
we're very, very of late. The biggest thing that we've been getting into is the war. We talk about things going on in Russia right. and, and Ukraine. And we, you know, we talk about like Elon Musk recently just purchasing Twitter and yeah. he's, he's already done commercialized space exploration. Well, one of the things that is happening today is the world of space and satellite surveillance is meeting the world of cyber. So a lot of the fight, the way countries will defend themselves, the way countries will, you know, engage in conflict with other countries, now will rely on what's going on in space. Mm, okay. And as the convergence of space and cyber are happening, that's increasing a whole nother level of the, the threat landscape, if you wow. will. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm very interested in how you changed from engineering to education and then into this business of cybersecurity. Yeah. Um, can you can you tell us more about like why did you choose engineering in the beginning and why you changed <laughs> to education and why that big difference? That's that's a great, great, great question because when I first started in engineering, didn't know a whole heck of a lot about it at all. Um, it was back in the early 90s when I made the decision um, to to go to school for that. And it was just one of those things back then. I just want to, you know, how do I build stuff? How do how do I become a part of utilizing technology in a way to build stuff? And I didn't know if I would do, you know, um, electrical engineering, industrial engineering, mechanical engineering. Uh, but the world of computer science was just becoming a thing back then. And so I kind of went in with that in mind. Um, I went to the education track because in general, I do like the piece of teaching. I do like, you know, coaching individuals and, and, and a teams of people on, you know, what's the best strategies that we can use to be successful. And so, and I did that primarily because as I was in sports, in the world of sports at that time, playing football, mm -hmm. I could not maintain the demanding engineering schedule right. that I had of that program. So I switched over. How do I apply all this math somewhere else? <laughs> I so know. I, so I, I, I moved it over and, and started into the world of education at that time. Um, so that, that's how the change happened. Okay. And after education, um, you took business administration, right? I did. Like, like, a, like a master. I did. I went in the world of teaching mm -hmm. and I taught in public school for about four years. Okay. And uh, during that time, I knew, okay, I'm either going to get back into the world of engineering and technology or I'm going to be a school administrator. And my mentor at the time told me, hey, you know, continue to explore, you know, the world of technology, it's getting broader and broader. And, and that's what I did. But what I wanted to do, um, even more so was um, ultimately own a business, own you know, business. and that's, and that's why I got into business administration. I wanted okay. to be a part of managing a company, you know, the world of operations that that intrigued me the most. Um, so so my my passion for technology coupled with um you know my desire for business ownership is is what drove me to do the mba program okay okay that's very interesting and um this reminds me of myself mm -hmm. from my experience i feel that i've been pretty much surrounded by you know like people who start business in my family, mm -hmm. at least. Um, I am from Venezuela and we have, you know, like a family of foreigner people. So like my grandparents, they were from Colombia. And a family moved. of how many people? How many did you say? So I have my two grandparents. So we are like about like 15. Oh, wow. Okay. So, my so big, big family, big family. Yeah. 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 Nice. So, yeah. So my grandparents, from my mom's side and my dad's side, they are from Colombia. Okay. And they moved to Venezuela. So they had to start from zero. 
yeah. they had to think about ways to innovate, you know, like to have a better quality of life. And um, from my dad's side, my family, they had a, like a um, manufacturer company mm -hmm. about clothes. Yeah. And also like, um, you know, like they used to make belts, uh, suitcases. Nice. And they have this company here. And they also had another company just for clothes. And my parents were more inclined to make clothes. The clothes, yeah. Yeah, they actually they worked in Venezuela for um, for the baseball team players. The oh, national, nice, nice, yeah, yes, yes. They used to make the uniforms for, for them. My mom used to design woman clothes and she used to sell them in boutiques mm -hmm. in Venezuela, in malls and everything. So I feel that I've been pretty much surrounded by people who think about like, you know, like to start something new. They have like that business. entrepreneurial spirit. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And now I'm curious, like, um, how your upbringing and education, you know, like, if you have your parents, your mm -hmm. grandparents, how did they influence or somebody else? Mm -hmm to where you are today. Stephanie, you bring up an excellent point when you talk about the family right. and the lineage. And so that's awesome that you <laughs> that you come <laughs> from, you know, these these uh, folks that have a mind to start something, have a mind to, you know, have their own clothing manufacturing company. Uh, that is like very yeah. exciting. And, <laughs> and cool to have as part of your history. And so um, for, for so many reasons. Um, and similarly, um, I can say my, my grandfather and my grandmother, uh, but my grandfather was a former army vet that had, um, when he completed his time, he started his own trucking company. And then he had a, um, he went from that to also doing a, a big produce market in oh, wow. in the area that was a you know lamb's produce. Um, it it was kind of well known in South Jersey for having like you know great produce on your way to the shore um, and coming from the shore that type of thing. And so a good name. Some of the things that I learned from him is that you know your hard work and your name you know it goes a long way. It goes a long way. So I'm sure in your family there's probably people that know you right. because your parents have, and your grandparents have put forth a good name, you yeah. know, for themselves. You know, if they started a company that was successful enough to be the designers of the national baseball team there in Venezuela, I mean, that's pretty impressive. Cause I'm sure there were a lot of companies right. either pro sports could have gone to so to choose your family, you know, that's that's a pretty, you know, big deal. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> so now with, with that, as it relates to the things that, you know, you're getting into today, um, the the clothing or, you know, the, the family history, does does any of that drive the things that you're passionate about or does anything from your history drive in terms of, you know, what you feel is, you know, what, what makes you tick? Okay. Yes, absolutely. Um, the fact that I've been, you know, surrounded by my parents, my mom is one person who always tells me like, Stephanie, you can do whatever you put your effort on and whatever you want to do, like you can do everything. Mm. If you want, if you want to do it, you can do everything. Um, I, I'm very blessed to have parents that they support me in anything that I want to do. And more it has to be with my career journey. Um, in the beginning in Venezuela, I wasn't sure about what to do with myself in school. Mm -hmm. Just because since I was a kid, I wanted to be just like a singer. Oh, nice, nice. A singer. I, I used to play piano since I was 11 years old. I play piano. And I wanted to be a singer. And I had this dream of having my band and, you know, like giving concerts and having tours. 
Um, but so I'm sitting down with a rock star. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> um, but awesome. but everything changes with time, and I used to hear these comments telling me like, oh, but that does it, it will not give you money. That's like a hobby, you know. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. that shouldn't be something that you should be studying for right you know or yes. so it's so it's something else be doctor that you know that will give mm -hmm. you a lot of money be mm -hmm. something else you can study administration something else but i wasn't into that mm -hmm. i didn't like administration i i actually thought about doctor to being a doctor but mm -hmm. just because people used to put you know like yes this career just in front of me on my table like Pick this, pick this, but not this. It's just like a hobby. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought about being biologist. Oh, nice. I really like biology. Mm -hmm. I really like, you know, the way of the ecosystems, everything mm -hmm. about animals. Mm -hmm. And to study all of this. And in Venezuela, like the music production or like the music journey mm -hmm. is not that effective or you know uh, you don't have that opportunity to study there mm -hmm. in Venezuela just because it's not like here in USA and I I couldn't study in Venezuela just because I came here to USA mm -hmm. and still in my mind mm -hmm. like it was like for two three years I was like I'm gonna study biology I'm gonna study biology but just because I knew that music was like just right behind just that's something that I really like. That's my passion, but it's just like right here and so what just is, like a hobby. Now, what is it about music that you like? Sorry to ask you all the, no, 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 ask no. you a bunch of questions no, now. No. I know you brought me here to ask some questions, but <laughs> but no, I'm I'm curious. What is it about music that you know you you really feel passionate about? So my dad, he mm -hmm. used to listen a lot of music from here actually mm -hmm. from USA mm -hmm. since he was um, young he was yeah he was a kid and of course um, he he doesn't sing he doesn't play he plays guitar oh nice yeah <clears throat> but my family um, from my dad's side they are I, 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 I don't want to say like they are musicians but they enjoy music mm -hmm. you know what I mean mm -hmm. yeah so, for example, my aunt, my aunt, she's a composer of music, and I believe that I was into music just because I really enjoyed singing, and it was back into church. Mm, awesome. Yeah. I wanted to be, you know, I wanted to create music for God. Awesome. That's, that's that's a beautiful. thing, yeah. And um, I said I am always saying this since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. If I have a talent, I want to put it. You know, mm -hmm. like I want to do it for God. I want yes. to work for Him. Yes. So if I have this voice or if I have this talent of playing music, I want to do something good with it. Yeah. And so, just impact people. Yeah. Whatever you do, you want to give it give what you feel is what you believe is a God-given talent. Right. You want to give it back exactly. so that it can be used for exactly. however exactly. he sees fit to, to you know, help the world. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that's, that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. I, I ask that because, you know, when you talk about my, you know, what's my inspiration, what's my history, what's been a part of my journey, um, it's that very thing. It's the thing that makes, you know, tapping into the thing that I'm passionate about. Right. And so for me, I grew up a gym rat. I loved all sports, you know, from baseball to basketball. Football was my thing mm -hmm. that just God helped me to be a special person on the football field. Right. Um, but one of the things that I had to realize in the world of, you know, how does this translate into doing something that you know I can do long term, mm -hmm. and I knew that some of those same qualities that I had as it related to sports um, translated in the world of business. Some of the same, some some of the same things that I 
that I, I saw myself doing as a teacher, mm -hmm. it was more of, okay, this is the pictures coming together now. Mm -hmm. So I, I like sports. I like technology. I like teaching. And, and it's all coming to the point of, yes, I like creating things. I like being a part of, you know, new, the innovative way to get something done. But then I also like to motivate people, get them up to a challenge, help them to accomplish something that they may not otherwise felt that they could accomplish. Mm -hmm. And so those qualities in me, you know, point back to that. That's kind of the way that that God enables me to be a leader, if you will. I think leaders or people that are, you know, whatever their talent is, you know, singers, they all have a different style, a different thing right. that, you know, is is their way of doing it. And for me, um, as a leader, it's about motivating. And my the, the tagline of my company is, you know, both innovations group, bold and transformative. Wow. I believe that, you know, I'm all about, you know, how do you do the bold thing? How do you do something that is going to make a positive change? You know, change the community of Frederick Community College, right. change the community of Frederick, you know, of Maryland. You know, how do you how do we do things that would be that bold thing to step out and do? And and I know, you know, it, you got me fired up now because, you know, <laughs> you're someone that's, you know, speaking in bold terms to say, I believe that, you know, whatever it is that I'm gifted to do, I just want to give that talent back to God. Right. That's a bold thing to say that. Yeah. So now you got my juices flowing, Stephanie. That's, you know, <laughs> I'm all about the bold, all about the transformative. And so that's awesome. Thank you. Thank no, you. That's, yeah. that's awesome. So you feel like with your business and everything that you do, you have you have a meaning in your life. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. So it has to be professionally. You have a meaning, but also it is it is is a impacting your life and impacting everyone's life mm -hmm. right yes that's awesome that's yeah. awesome yeah I, I feel like if if it's if it's just about me and, and me and my friend were talking about this recently if if you're doing something and it's really just about you you're basically doing you know it's a hobby it's something that you like to do when it's something that your purpose to do it's going to impact others. It's going to do good for your community around you. I think that that's the difference of, you know, God may give you things that you're passionate about. And some of the things are like when I played sports and everything, it was like, I'd love to do it. This is what I like to do. And it was for me. It was, it was like a gift for me. When I took some of those same qualities that I learned, mm -hmm. you know, in those practices and, you know, the hard work that it takes to win, you know, sometimes you're going to go, you, you know, my coach would say, it's now the fourth quarter. Who's going to be ready for the fourth quarter, you know, for the tough times, you know, who's going to put in the extra work now to, to get stuff done. Um, you know, when you're losing and, it, and, it, and it's coming back, you know, all those qualities of learning to, to overcome um, in the world of sports when it was just for me, it was great. It was a gift. Now that I'm able to do things that are taking those same qualities, those same core values and do something in the world of technology that benefits others, right. I feel like then it's a part of purpose. It is a part of my purpose. And so that's okay. and that fuels. And, and when you're when you feel like you're actually living in purpose, you know, on purpose, um, then work doesn't even feel like work anymore. You know, like you, you feel like this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed exactly. to woke, wake up yeah. and do stuff that's that a part like of my purpose. And that you it, love. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that way you don't have to work. That way you don't have to work. Exactly. And that way when it's hard and difficult at times, when you know that there's another purpose behind it, yeah. it's not even about, okay, how do I feel this morning when I get up? You know, because if it were up to me, you know, some days, you know, we might sleep till noon, you know, but when you when you find time to do things and tap into your purpose, that is truly a blessing, yeah, you know, is. for the individual that that finds that. And it's a blessing for, you know, people that receive it because it's um, 
you know, it's, it, to me, it's just a, a special thing. Yeah, I'm glad that we brought up this topic just because I want to ask you, um, what would be an advice for students, mm -hmm. students like me, mm -hmm. um, to find that path, right? Mm -hmm. To find, you know, like their ideal vocation mm -hmm. that has meaning in their lives and that also could impact people's lives. Sure. Well, obviously, I'm biased to the world of technology. And so, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, in the world of technology, it's touching everything that we do. You know, we can't, we're, we're now in a place where we've uh, kind of toyed with this idea as a society of what would it be like to have an autonomous vehicle, a self-driving vehicle, okay. you know, we're at that point. Like if, if, if that door opens, like, all things can, you know, yeah. can get accomplished, if you will. If we put our trust in the cars that we drive, uh, kind of, we, we turn over um, so much responsibility for the cars to basically drive themselves, then that can touch so many things. It's happening in the world of, you talked about being a doctor. It's happening in the world of, you know, medicine, where a lot of robotic arms and robotic technology is being used to do more precise surgeries mm -hmm. and various procedures in medicine. Um, it's, you know, so you asked me, what can someone do to find? For me, it was, you know, learning more about technology and the ways that it impacts the world around me. And then I realized, oh, I wasn't using it, but it's, you know, so I would say first, never stop learning. Never stop learning. Never think never that the learning. journey is over like explore the you know so you go to school for one thing and the world is continuing to change yeah and so evolution yeah evolution <laughs> and so you know a lot about the world of you know music probably you know you you probably know something about the world of clothing manufacturing I do. um so yeah. you know so it's one of those things where it's like what are some of those other things that you hear other people doing that may be of interest to just learn about. So learning something could be something that opens people up, not to necessarily do it as a profession, but as we continue to learn the way the world is connected, okay. you know, that may open life up to, hey, I love doing this. And now there's a new way to do something in what I love. You know, so so that's one thing. Always be learning, um, and um, I would say, you know, never. When when you do figure out the things that you're good at, I believe that there's a reason that you're good at it. Okay. You know, I believe that you know the fact that you are a singer. You know, whether you're on stage singing to twenty thousand people. Uh, putting on concerts, doing a tour, or whether it's, you know, singing to, you know, a nursing home or whatever, or even just by yourself in the shower or something, you know, it, w whatever it is, because I do that myself. I, yeah. That's when I put on my yeah. best concert. It's, it's getting ready in the morning. Um, but at any rate, w whatever your talent is, um, you know, figure, figure out, like, wh what do I like doing? Yeah, I think we all have something that we actually like doing and um, and then explore all of that and say, how does this tie into other parts of life? How can I give, you know, um, and then I'd say with that. Do something to help somebody. Okay. I do believe that if you're learning something new, if you're you know, if you know the things that you're good at, you know, and take an assessment, what are the things that I'm actually good at? Even personality traits. You know, some people are just good at talking. Yeah. They could talk a mile a minute or they can talk, you know, maybe they're not perfect. Maybe their talking gets on people's nerves, but maybe they just love to talk. If you love it, if you're good at it, own it. Um, and then when you take an assessment of all that, Again, I, I dare somebody to do something in a way where they say, how can I help somebody or help an organization, but do some volunteer work. I believe that those three things 
will help you discover more of who you are, discover your passions, and then that leads you into the path. Once you discover the things that light you up, the things that you're passionate about, probably somewhere in there in some shape or form, that's where your passion meets your purpose. You know, that's yeah, what I believe. Yeah, those are amazing advices. And I believe the same with you, that you need to know you, mm -hmm. you need to know what you, like, what you are good at. And this is amazing. Thank you so much for those advices. Now I have another question for you. Shoot, sure. <laughs> yeah, Nathan, what advice would you give someone who wants to set off in a similar direction like you, starting a business? Okay, great. So in starting a business, I will say again, if, if, you, if you know who you are, great. If you don't, first figure that out. First, figure out, you know, like we just talked about passion into purpose. Yeah. If you know what your purpose to do, great. When you're in it, the, the, the one thing that you should do is, you know, figure out how do I talk about what I want to accomplish? How do I market myself? Market. How do I spread the word? So marketing would be a biggie. Okay. You know, figure, start to figure that piece out. How do I market what I do? Um, And, and then I would figure out um, who are some of the people that I may be able to go to for advice? Who are the experts? The beautiful thing about today, the world that we live in, there is so much information to gather that is free. You know, some, some bad, but there, there is enough good right. that we can learn, you know, a lot about the things that we may want to do. So there's not a lot of new under the sun, if you will, There's new ways of doing things, but there's usually somebody that may have done what we want to do. Right. And I would say, study that person. The person that I try to um, study and emulate is um, a guy by the name of David Stewart. He owns Worldwide Technologies. Uh, he was a small business you know, that started in the early 90s or late 90s and now You know, he's, he owns one of the, you know, most successful black owned businesses in the world. Wow. It's a $13 billion dollar company today. Wow. And, and he is one of the few, one of the, one of the 14 black billionaires in the world. There's only 14 of them. Wow. Um, out of 750, there's only wow. 14 black billionaires. Um, for myself, I studied the, you know, as a black man, I have studied the lives of those individuals and try to glean from what has made them successful because right. some of their heritage and background is just like me. So it's kind of like, well, I can't yeah, as a black man, there may be certain obstacles I deal with, right. but there are also, Hey, there are 14 or 15 black billionaires in the world. So somebody's done it. Somebody's been successful. Yeah. So how can I study them? And today there's so much information that we can gather, you know, that we don't have the excuse of, I don't know how to figure out. I don't know how to find out. I've bought his books, you know, so he's put out a couple of books. I bought his book. I have one on Audible. Um, and so that's, that's what I would say. And then, then lastly, I would just say, you know, be fat, you know, hurry up, do, you know, don't wait, do what you set out to do, make steps towards it each day but also be patient. It's crazy. Hurry up, but be patient. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, stuff is going to take time. So you gotta, you gotta be hustling. You gotta be hustling. You gotta be on your grind, but, but hurry and be patient. If that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your story and advice with us today. That's yes. awesome. Jonathan, I really enjoyed our conversation. I know that listeners will be inspired by your story. Just as I am. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I hope this episode has served as inspiration for you and will help you make wise decisions involving your professional career. We appreciate your continued support. If you have any questions or topic suggestions, feel free to leave them in a comment section. And don't forget to visit the FCC website for great career info and counseling.